Hello and welcome to Replacement Player Baseball. The Cubs are coming into today's game off of a dramatic come-behind victory where they walked it off in the bottom of the ninth inning yesterday against the Braves. Today, we're going to see game two of this series between the Braves and Cubs. And the Cubs are sending Chris Archer out to the mound today. He is making start number three with a 1-0 record, a 0.69 ERA, and a 0.77 whip. I feel like you could buy a candy bar for his ERA. So the Cubs lineup today is going to be Nico Horner, Paradis, Rizzo, Springer, Correa, Tauschman, Fegley, Archer batting 8th, and Santana batting ninth. On the Braves' side of the equation, we see Mike fulton whose name I know I'm going to butcher all day. He is making start number 3. With a record of 0-0, zero and zero, he has a 7.56 ERA and a 144 whip. The Braves lineup will include Pesha, Inciarte, Albies, Acuna, Freeman, Camargo, Darnow doing the catching, Fletcher at short, and the Braves pitcher batting ninth. The Cubs also have a trade to announce today as they have brought in Chris Sale from the Red Sox, and we expect him to be slotted in to the rotation uh, in the next series against the Mets. Now, today's game, it is 38 degrees. The wind is blowing in from center at 10 MPH. It is kind of miserable down at field level today. And now, we're going to see the Cubs take the field. Hopefully, they're bundled up warm for this game. Archer is on the mound. Pesha, the batter, leading off for the Braves. The Braves are coming in with a record of 6-8 and eight and 4th place in the NL East, opposed by our Cubs, who are 10-3 and 1st and place in the NL Central. Now, with a full count, Archer is looking to deliver the pitch to Pesha. And here it comes. And that is ball four low, so Pesha draws the leadoff walk. And now Inciarte is the batter. He hit a home run yesterday. Coming up with nobody out, the runner on first. Here is the first pitch from Archer. And a grounder to second. Horner has it, throws to short, but no relay to first as Correa is upended by the slide at second base. So that is one out on the fielder's choice. The runner Inciarte is safe, and now Albies is the next batter. One out, one man on. Two strike count from Archer and a pop up to center. Springer coming in. He looks up and makes the catch for out number two. Next batter is Acuna with two outs and one man on. Archer working with a 2 2 count. Acuna waiting for the pitch. And there's a swing and a miss for strike three. So that's going to end the inning on a big curveball. We go to the bottom of the second. The Braves strand a runner. This is a 0-0 ball game. Horner facing Fulkenavitz here in the bottom of the second, bottom of the first inning, leading off for the Cubs. 1-1 one, one count. Horner waiting for the pitch. And here it comes. And there's a drive down the right field line. That's going to be extra bases. Horner's rounding first, heading for second. He is going to head into second, and he's going to keep going. He's going for third. He slides into third. The throw is late. And Horner has a leadoff triple here in the bottom of the first inning. So the Cubs threatening early in this contest. Next up is Isaac Paradis. With nobody out and a runner 90 feet away. Paradis waiting for the 2-0 pitch. And that gets away. It goes all the way to the backstop. Horner's coming home. He slides and he is safe. And the wild pitch gives the Cubs a 1-0 lead here in the bottom of the first inning. So now Paradis is up here with a three ball count. And he waits for the three and one pitch. That is inside for ball four. For Paradis, that's what he does. He just keeps drawing walks. He heads down to first. And now the Cubs send Rizzo up to the plate with nobody out and a runner on first. Here comes the pitch to Rizzo. And he is hit. Oh my, Rizzo is hitting the shoulder. And he is in pain. He heads down to first, but he's going to shake it off. So now the Cubs have first and second with nobody out. George Springer is the batter. Bottom of the first inning, Cubs up by one. Here's a two and one pitch to George Springer. 
and a grounder over to first. Picked up by Freeman. He throws to second. There's no relay to first, however. So the double play is not completed. And now Chicago has runners on the corners with one out, and Carlos Correa is the batter. Bottom of the first inning, one run already in. Correa waiting for the full count pitch, and there's a grounder over to first again. Freeman steps on first, and he throws to second. Well, he, they have to tag the runner at second because they got the force at first, but apparently that was completed. So the double play ends the inning, and now the Cubs take a 1-0 lead into the top of the second inning. Freddie Freeman is the next batter. He's facing Archer in the top of the second, leading off for the Braves. One ball count. Archer delivering the pitch. Line drive to left. That's going to drop in for a base hit. Santana plays it on a hop, and that'll be a leadoff single for Freddie Freeman, which brings up John Camargo. Nobody out, one man on. Here's a one-strike count, and the pitch, and Camargo lines that one in the center field. That's another base hit. Freeman rounding second. He's heading for third. The throw goes to third. Freeman slides, and he is safe. So back-to-back -back singles puts runners on the corners for the Braves with nobody out. Archer now facing Travis Darnoud with the tying run 90 feet away here in the top of the second inning. Archer working with a two-strike count. Here comes the pitch, and a pop-up to right. Coming in fast is the right fielder, Tauschman. He makes the catch, and he throws it in quickly for out number one. So that was not nearly deep enough to allow the runner to tag up and score. And now Fletcher is the batter. One out, runners on the corners. Fletcher waiting for the three and one pitch. That is low, it is ball four. That loads the bases. So that is going to set up the force at any base. The Cubs are gonna face the pitcher with one out in the top of the second inning. Here comes the 2-2 pitch. The infield's drawn in, and there's a liner past the drawn-in infield into right field. One run is in. The Braves have tied this ball game at one in the top of the second inning as the pitcher gets the RBI single, and now Pacia is the batter. Base is still loaded, one out. Archer working with a 2-2 count. Here comes the pitch, and a grounder to third. The throw to second. The relay to first, and there is a 5-4-3 double play to end the inning and prevent the run from scoring. So the Cubs allow one. The game is now tied going to the bottom of the second inning. First up for the Cubs in the second is going to be Mike Tauschman. Three and one count. Tauschman waiting, and there's a pop-up to left center field. Coming over is the center fielder, Pesha. He calls him off and makes the catch for out number one. Next up is Fegley. With one out, nobody on. One ball count, Fegley. Popping it up down the left field line. Coming in fast is the left fielder, Inciarte, who makes the catch for out number two. Now we have Archer up bat with two outs and nobody on. Archer waiting for the full count pitch. And there's a swing and a miss for strike three. So Archer waves at the fastball and heads back to the dugout. We're going to the top of the third of a 1-1 ball game. Archer facing in Ciarte here in the top of the third inning leading off for the Braves. Here is the first pitch from Archer. And there's a pop-up behind third base. Parada's going back. He catches it for out number one. Albies now the batter with one out and nobody on. Here comes the first pitch to Ozzie Albies. And that's lined down the left field line. That's much deeper. The left fielder, Santana, however, has a line on it and makes the catch for out number two. Acuna now the batter. Two outs and nobody on. 2-2 two, two count to Ronald Acuna. Here comes the pitch. And a liner, deep right field. That looks like he got all of it. It's going to head for the Sands. And the Braves now have a 2-1 to one lead in the top of the third inning. The fans throw that ball back out onto the field, but it's measured at 400 feet out into the right field seats. So, two to one Braves. Freddie Freeman now the batter. Two outs and nobody on. Here comes the pitch to Freddie Freeman. And that's lined into the gap in right center field. That's going all the way to the wall. Freeman rounding first, heading for extra bases. The throw comes back into the cutoff man. Freeman slides into second with a two out double. And the Braves still threatening here in the third. 
we see John Camargo now as the batter with two outs and one man on. One and two is the count. And Archer gets him to swing and miss for strike three. That's Archer's second strikeout. It ends the third inning. We're going to the bottom of the third of a two to one Atlanta lead. Danny Santana now the batter. Leading off for the Cubs in the bottom of the third inning. 1-1 one, one count. Santana lining that one down the right field line. Going back deep toward the well on the warning track. And the catch is made for the first out of the inning. Santana certainly gave it a ride. But he missed a home run by about, I don't know, 10 feet maybe down the right field line. So Nico Horner now is the batter. He is one for one today. Had a triple back in the first inning. He's facing... The Braves pitcher with one out and a one ball count. Here comes the pitch and a pop up in foul territory. Freeman chasing toward the dugout. He makes the catch for out number two. Paradis now the batter. He comes up with two outs and nobody on. Here's a one strike count and the pitch to Paradis. And he lines that one into center field. Pesha, however, coming in and making what feels like about his 10th excellent defensive play in this series to rob Paradis of a base hit. So the Cubs go down in order. We go to the top of the fourth of a two to one ball game. Archer facing Darnout. He's gonna face the lower third of the Braves lineup in the top of the fourth inning. One ball count, Archer delivering the pitch to Darnout. And there's a liner Right center field chasing his Tauschman toward the warning track. He'll make the catch for out number one. Coming up now is David Fletcher. One out and nobody on. Archer working with a 1-1 one, one count. Here is the pitch to Fletcher. And that's a grounder toward short. Correa has this one. He throws it over to first and that's out number two. Now the pitcher comes up facing Archer with two outs and nobody on. 1-1 one, one count. Archer looking to deliver the pitch. And a liner down the left field line. That's another base hit. This is going to be extra bases as he rounds first, heading for second. The throw goes to the cutoff man. A stand-up double with two outs for the Braves starting pitcher. And now that will bring up Pesha with two outs and one man on. Braves already up by one. Here's a 2-2 count and the pitch from Archer. And that hits Pesha. So that is going to put runners on first and second. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the top of the fourth inning, Enciarte now is the batter. With two outs and two men on, Archer needs to work his way out of this jam. Here's a one strike count and the pitch, and there's a pop up to left center. He's chasing his Santana. He calls off Springer. He gets under it to make the catch on the warning track and end the inning. So the Braves get two base runners. They strand them both. We're going to the bottom of the fourth of a two to one Atlanta lead. Now, Anthony Rizzo is going to lead off for the Cubs here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Cubs sending the three, four, and five batters up here in the bottom of the fourth. One, one count to Rizzo. Here comes the pitch. A liner into straightaway center field. This is going to be an easy play for Pesha. He'll make this play standing up, making the catch for out number one. Springer now the batter with one out and nobody on. Here's a two, two count and the pitch to George Springer. And a swing and a miss for strike three. He chases one outside the zone. That was a fastball at 97. And now Correa is the batter. Two outs, nobody on. Correa waiting for the full count pitch. Here it comes. And a grounder over toward third. Picked up and thrown over to first, which will end the inning. So the Cubs go down in order. We go to the top of the fifth of a two to one ball game. Archer now facing Albies here in the top of the fifth inning. Two to one in favor of the Braves. Two, two count. Here's the pitch from Archer. And a liner in the right field on the run is Tauschman. He makes the catch for out number one. Archer facing Acuna with one out, nobody on. Here's the full count and the pitch to Acuna. And there's a swing and a miss for strike three. Archer gets him on the fastball at 95. That's his third strikeout of the day. And it brings up Freddie Freeman with two outs and nobody on. 0-2 count. Here is the pitch to Freddie Freeman. And a grounder towards short. Correa has it. He throws over to first, and that'll end the inning. We go to the bottom of the fifth. It is still 2-1 to one in favor of the Braves. Tauschman facing 
Vulcan Avitz here in the bottom of the fifth, leading off for the Cubs. We're going to get Tauschman, Fegley, and Archer here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Here is the full count pitch to Tauschman. That's a liner in the gap in left center field. Pesha, however, making the diving catch, of course, because that's all he does. And that's the first out of the inning. That looked like it had double written all over it. Pesha covering all the ground to get over there and make the play for the first out. Fegley now the batter, one out and nobody on. 1-1 one, one count, Fegley waiting. And there's a liner over the left fielder's head, or the third baseman's head in the left field. That's going to be a single for Fegley. So now the Cubs have a runner on first and one out in the bottom of the fifth inning. And Chris Archer is going to be asked to lay down a bunt right here. Let's see if the sacrifice is successful. There's the bunt down the right first baseline. The first baseman, Freeman, has it. He throws to the pitcher covering, and that will be the second out of the inning. Sacrifice is successful as Fegley advances to second, and now Danny Santana is the batter. He is 0 for 1 on the day. He comes up with a tying run in scoring position and two outs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. 1 and 2 is the count, and Santana swings and misses for strike three. So that will end the inning. The Cubs strand a runner. We go to the top of the sixth of a two-to-one ball game. Archer coming out for inning of work number six here in the top of the sixth inning. Here is a one and two count. Archer delivering the pitch. And a liner into center field. That's going to be a leadoff single. So Archer, <coughs> excuse me, allows Camargo to get on base to lead off the inning. And that is going to give rise to the Cubs bullpen. So right now, we've got righties coming up. So we're gonna warm up Junior Fernandez for the sixth inning. And we're also going to warm up our Loogie Patterson. If we get to NCR day. So, we're going to visit the mound as well. He says he's got plenty of juice. Fernandez is warming up. Patterson is warming up. All right. Top of the sixth inning. Runner on first. Nobody out. Cubs down by one. Here's a one ball count and the pitch from Archer. And a liner in right field. There's another base hit. Back-to-back -back singles. And that's going to put runners on first and third with nobody out in the top of the sixth inning. And now... Archer's gotten himself into a jam. David Fletcher is the next batter. With nobody out, runners on the corners. The Cubs, down by one, trying to hold the Braves right here. Archer is going to work with a two and one count. And Fletcher lines that one in the left field, played on a hop. That's going to allow a run to score. Fletcher gets the RBI single, and now this is a three to one ball game. So the next batter is the pitcher, Fulkenavitz. And since he is two for two against Archer today, I feel like this would be a good situation to bring in a reliever. So, well, the righty, so Junior Fernandez is not yet ready to come in. I'm gonna bring in the lefty Patterson because honestly, Archer can't get this guy out. So, Patterson is gonna come into the game and he is going to face Fulkenavitz here in the top of the sixth inning with nobody out and the runners on first and second. Here comes the first pitch, and there's a bunt right back toward the bound. The third baseman has it. He throws over to first, and the throw is late. How does that even happen? Parada's throw was late, and that is going to be an infield single for the pitcher. The bases are now loaded, and Patterson is facing Pesha. With nobody out in the top of the sixth inning. Patterson working with a one and two count. The infield's drawn in. There's a swing and a miss for strike three. So that is the first out of the inning. And now Patterson facing in Ciarte. Here in the top of the sixth inning. Bases are still loaded. One out. Patterson working with a full count. Infield drawn in. And ball four. The run is walked in. Patterson issues the walk, and the Braves now have a 4-1 lead. 
And now Ozzy Albies is the batter, and we're going to bring in Junior Fernandez, who is finally ready to pitch in this ball game. Fernandez comes in, he's thrown six innings, allowed two runs, four walks, ten strikeouts, and an ERA of three. Fernandez facing Albies, who's turned around to the left side now, to bat against Fernandez with one out, bases loaded in the top of the sixth inning. Here comes the one ball count and the pitch from Junior Fernandez. Here it comes. Liner past the drawn in infield into center field. That's going to drive in two. The run comes home. The runner comes home to score. That'll be an RBI single for Inciarte, or excuse me, for Albies as Inciarte goes to second, and now it's a 6-1 to one Atlanta lead. So Fernandez now facing Acuna in the top of the six. Four runs already in. Here comes the 0-2 pitch from Junior Fernandez, and he hits him. So Fernandez hits the batter to load the bases again with two strikes even. And that is going to mean we're going to have to warm up another reliever. We're going to warm up Liam Hendricks, I guess. So we visit the mound. He says he's got plenty left in the tank, but I don't know what's in that tank because it doesn't seem to be benefiting anybody. Fernandez facing Freeman with the bases loaded in the top of the sixth inning. One man is out. Here is the first pitch from Fernandez to Freeman. And a drive deep to right field. Kiss it goodbye. Freddie Freeman has just hit a grand slam home run, and that is a 10 to one ball game now in favor of the Braves. 456 feet out onto the street behind the right field bleachers. So now, Fernandez facing Camargo with one out and nobody on. Here comes the two and one pitch from Junior Fernandez. And there's a pop up, foul territory, chasing is Fegley, and he makes the catch for out number two. And now Travis Darnout is the batter. So Hendricks is going to face Darnout and see if he can get out of this inning with two outs and nobody on. Here comes the 2-0 count and the pitch. And that's a drive, deep right field, but this time Tauschman's going to have room. Going down the right field line, he'll put it away for out number three. So the Braves score eight times and take a 10 to one lead in the bottom of the sixth inning. Nico Horner is leading off for the Cubs here in the bottom of the sixth. Cubs down by nine with four innings remaining in this ball game. Horner waiting for the first pitch and there's a grounder up the middle. The shortstop dives, he has it. He throws over to first and that's gonna be out number one. Next up is Paradis with one out, nobody on. Here's the first pitch to Isaac Paradis, and he lines that one into right field. A long running play and a dive by Acuna, who makes the catch for out number two. I swear the Braves feel like that they've got defensive masterpieces every inning. So Rizzo now the batter with two outs and nobody on. Here's a 2-2 count and the pitch to Anthony Rizzo, and there's a grounder towards second. The throw goes to first, which will end the inning. The Cubs go down in order. We go to the top of the seventh of a 10 to one ball game. Liam Hendricks. Liam Hendricks is ready to come into this ball game. So how are we gonna do it? We're just gonna put, I guess we're just gonna put Hendricks right in. He can bat eight, that's fine. So Hendricks is gonna face Fletcher here in the top of the seventh with the Cubs down by nine. Here comes the one ball count and the pitch from Liam Hendricks. He's looking for the sign, and here's the pitch, and a ground ball towards short. Correa has it. He throws over to first. That's going to be out number one. Next up is the pitcher. Hendricks working with a 2-2 count. Here comes the pitch, and strike three is called. That'll be the second out of the inning. Big curveball there to record the strikeout looking, and it brings up Albert Almora Jr., who is going to pinch hit for the number one spot here in the Braves lineup. So Almora facing Hendricks with two outs and a one strike count. Hendricks delivering the pitch and there's a pop up to center. Coming in is Springer. He gets under it and he makes the catch to end the inning. So the Braves go down in order. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning of a 10 to one ball game. 
And here to lead the seventh inning stretch today is Billy Williams. George Springer leading off for the Cubs in the bottom of the seventh inning. The pitcher spot is due up fifth if we would get that far. So we're and actually we're gonna be warming up. We're gonna warm up Abbott to throw the final two innings of this ball game. So Springer facing Fulkenavitz here in the bottom of the seventh. One and two count, Springer waiting for the pitch. And there's a liner into right field. That'll be a leadoff single. So in the realm of possibilities where the Cubs come back in this ball game, a leadoff single certainly seems like the first step down that path. Carlos Correa now is the batter with nobody out and a runner on first. Correa waiting for the first pitch from Fulkenavitz. And there's a drive down the left field line. That's going to be gone. He hit that one in the second row of the left field seat. And now Correa has his fourth home run of the ball game, three, fourth home run of the season, 384 feet out to left field. And now the Graves' lead has been cut to seven. Mike Tauschman is the next batter. He's facing Fulkenavitz here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Full count. Here is the pitch to Tauschman. And he's going to ground it over towards second. Picked up and thrown over to first. That is out number one. Next up is Fegley. With one out, nobody on. Fegley, one for two against Fulkenavitz here in the bottom of the seventh inning. One ball count. Fegley waiting for the pitch. And he drives that one deep right field. Going to be playable as the right fielder on the warning track makes the catch for out number two. And now the pitcher's spot is up, and we're going to see a pinch hitter for the pitcher's spot. And the first man off the Cubs bench today is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, yesterday's hero, Miguel Amaya. So Amaya comes in to pinch hit for the pitcher's spot with two outs in the bottom of the seventh inning. One and two count. Amaya waiting for the pitch. And there's a swing and a miss for strike three. So that will end the inning. We go to the top of the eighth of a 10-3 ball game. And now Amaya will stay in to catch. And Abbott is going to come out and pitch here in the eighth inning. Corey Abbott stepping out onto the mound. He has thrown one inning so far this year. One hit, one walk, and one strikeout, and an ERA of zero. So Abbott facing Inciarte here in the top of the eighth inning. Trying to hold it at a seven-run deficit to try to improve the Cubs' chances of coming back. Abbott working with a full count. Looking for the sign, and here's the pitch. And there's a swing and a miss for strike three. So Abbott records the strikeout, and it brings up Ozzy Albies. One out, nobody on. Two-strike count, Abbott delivering the pitch. And a grounder to first. Rizzo has it. He steps on the base. That is going to be out number two. Acuna now the batter with two outs and nobody on. 2-2 two, two count. Acuna waiting for the pitch. And there's a liner right at Rizzo. He reaches out reflexively and makes the catch to end the inning. So we go to the bottom of the eighth now. It is a 10-3 ball game. And the new pitcher for the Braves is going to be righty Bryce Wilson. He comes out of the Braves' bullpen with two and two-thirds innings to his name, five strikeouts, and an ERA of 13.5. His first opponent will be the Cubs' left fielder, Danny Santana. He's going to step up from the left side against the righty, Wilson. Here is a full count pitch as Santana stands in. And there's a swing and a miss for strike three. He chased a fastball inside for the first out of the inning. Nico Horner now the batter. He's one for three on the day. Scored the first run of this ball game. Horner facing Wilson with one out and nobody on. Two strike count. Horner taking strike three looking right on the outside corner. So that is out number two. Paradis now the batter. With two outs and nobody on. Paradis facing Wilson with a two strike count. And there's a liner down the right field line. That's going to be extra bases. Paradis rounding first, heading for second. The ball rattling around down in the right field corner. And Paradis slides into second with a two-out double. 
And so now, with Paradis on second, that will bring up Rizzo. With two outs and one man on, Wilson facing Rizzo here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Two strike count, and Rizzo takes strike three looking. That was a fastball right on the outside corner. So the Cubs strand a runner. Nobody scores. We go to the top of the ninth of a 10-3 ball game. Freeman facing Abbott here in the top of the ninth. 2-2 two, two count. Abbott looking to deliver the pitch. And there's a swing and a miss for strike three. So Abbott getting strikeout number two, and that'll bring up Camargo. One out, nobody on. One strike count. Abbott delivering the pitch. And a pop-up to right. Going back toward the warning track is Tauschman. He looks up and makes the catch right in front of the wall for out number two. Next up is Darnoud with two outs and nobody on. One strike count and the pitch to Travis Darnoud. And a pop-up to right. Again, going back is Tauschman toward the warning track. He gets under it and he makes the catch to end the inning. So we go to the bottom of the ninth. Cubs down by seven. So George Springer is going to lead off for the Cubs here in the bottom of the ninth inning. The Cubs need seven to tie with only three outs remaining. Springer facing Bryce Wilson. Here's a one and two count. And Wilson delivers strike three looking. So that is Wilson's fourth strikeout of the game. Every batter he has faced that he's gotten out has been a strikeout. So now Correa is the batter with one out and nobody on. Wilson working with a one and two count. And here comes the pitch. And there's a swing and a miss for strike three. So Wilson is apparently going to strike out almost every batter he faces. Tauschman now comes up from the left side. And here we're going to have the pinch hitter, Ryan Braun, come up in the bottom of the ninth inning with two outs. And nobody on base. Braun facing Wilson here in the bottom of the ninth. One ball count. Braun waiting for the pitch. And there's a drive. Deep left center field going back toward the wall. And that is going to be a home run. So Ryan Braun with a pinch hit home run. In probably the least consequential situation I could imagine. Braun making this a 10-4 ball game. And now the pitcher Abbott comes up next. So, in this case, we're going to send Malik Smith up to pinch hit for Abbott. And on the off chance that we would actually get to the 10th inning, I guess we'll warm up Jimenez. Because if we get to the 10th inning, that means we have a tie ball game. So, Wilson facing Smith with two outs and nobody on here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Wilson, with a one ball count, delivering the pitch. And Smith drives that one into center field. However, Pesha reacts quick. Or Almora, I'm sorry. Almora was the defensive replacement. He gets back to make the catch and end the game. The Braves getting 10 runs on 12 hits with no errors. The Cubs, four runs on six hits with no errors. That sixth inning really killed the Cubs as the Braves scored eight times and put away this ball game. So the Cubs' Chris Archer suffers the loss. He drops to 1-1. One and one. He threw five innings of nine-hit, five-run baseball with two walks and three strikeouts. The Cubs' bullpen did not exactly look strong as Patterson and Fernandez both gave up a couple of runs while only recording one and two outs, respectively. Fulkenewitz gets his first win of the season. He threw seven innings of four-hit, three-run baseball with one walk and four strikeouts. He goes to 1-0. Bryce Wilson, with two innings of relief, put the game away. Freddie Freeman is our player of the game today. He went three for five with two runs scored and four RBIs hitting his fourth home run of the season. So the Cubs dropped to 10-4 and four while the Braves improved to 7-8. and eight. Thank you for watching Replacement Player Baseball.